This is a story called The Little Monsters, Chapter 78. The Trambler's gang get the little monsters into trouble, causing them to run away. The kids are in town spending their pocket money when they see the Trembler's gang. As soon as they saw them, they decided to go to another part of town. They went round a few shops and bought some stuff. What they didn't realise was that the Trembler's gang had seen them and they were following them around. When they did realise, they told them to go away and they did also. Also, the little monsters fall. They went into another shop. As they were walking round, the Trembler's gang were sneaking up behind them and putting stolen items in their bags. When they paid for their for the things they were buying, they went to the to leave the store and as they did so the alarms went off. The security guards grabbed them and held them to and told them to empty the bag. As they did so they pulled the stolen goods out. They were taken to the manager's office and the police and their parents were called. By the time their parents got there, they were all crying. Wah, wah, wah. They told their parents, the, sh the shop manager and the police, that they didn't take the stuff and that they didn't know how the stuff got in their bags. No one believed them, even their parents. The police arrested them and took them with their parents to the station where they were all charged with theft. As they were leaving the station, the kids secretly arranged to meet at the swing. As soon as they got home, they were smacked hard on their bones, grounded for six weeks and sent to their rooms. However, as soon as they got to their rooms, they, brought, they packed a bag and put stuff in their beds to make it look like they were in their, in their sleep. Then they climbed out of their bedroom windows and met up at the swing. They knew that they couldn't stay there in case anyone they knew saw them and told their parents so they made their way to the secret hideout. They stayed there for a few days but they started to run out of food and they knew that they couldn't go shopping nearby because someone who knew them might see them and tell their parents. They packed up their things and then they got on their bikes and rode and until they could ride no more. After they'd had a short rest, they got on their bikes and rode about another five miles. Then they stopped to rest again, and as, as they did so, they spotted some shops. They bought loads of food, enough to last them for quite a while, and then they made their way back to the secret hideout. They were too scared to go home, so they stayed there for over a week. And then they went back to the shops that they went to the first time they went shopping. However, as they set off, a couple of coppers in a police car pulled up beside them. And one of them says, we know who you kids are and don't even think about moving. As soon as the cops got out of their car, they told the kids to get off their bikes, but they rode off as fast as they could. They went through some woods and to the canal. They kept going until they came to some locks. They rode over a bridge until they came to a caravan and bought a park. It was getting dark so they found a caravan that had been left unlocked and went in and stayed there until the next morning. The next morning they woke up at about 6am and made their way back to the hideout. Thankfully they now, now thankfully they now had enough food to last them at least another two weeks. They were still scared to go home, especially since their close encounter with the cops. So they stayed at the hideout. They only went outside to collect wood for the fire. However, after not going outside for two weeks, the kids decided to take a chance and go and get some more shopping. This time they went further afield and they took some job stuff with them so that they could play pranks on people. However, 
Someone who knew them saw them in the supermarket and rang their parents and their parents called the police officer who was in charge of their case. The cars were sent to pick up the kids but when the kids saw them they tried to ride off on their bikes but the cops told them to stay where they were. The kids did as they were told but as soon as the cops got out of their car the kids threw several stink bombs in them and then they put pink cushions in front of each car wheel. The cops got back in their cars and opened all the windows to let the smell out and the fresh air in. As they went to drive away they drove over the pink cushions and every one of their tyres were punctured much to the kids amusement. However, what the kids didn't realise was that the police knew it wasn't them that had stolen the stuff in their bags because the Tremblers gang had been caught red handed doing the exact same thing to other people. However, they didn't leave their hideout again for another two weeks. By this time they would had enough and they missed their family so they decided to go home. When they got there and their parents saw them they cried with relief and the kids ran into their arms crying. When they had all finished hugging and crying Kicker's mum said to them We know that you kids didn't, didn't do what you were accused of because the Tremblay's gang were caught red handed doing the exact same thing to other people. The kids started crying again and they apologised to their parents and their parents apologised to them. On the day the Tremblers were in court, the kids wanted to be there to see them get their punishment. They were all sentenced to two years in Young Offenders Institutes. After that, the little monsters soon got back to their normal selves. When their parents asked them where they'd stayed throughout the whole time, they were away. They just said that they'd found an old empty house and stayed there because they didn't want them to know about their secret hideout. A few days after they got home they went back to school and Mrs Tinker and Mrs Dapperjack and all the other teachers were really happy to see them. Mrs Dapperjack told them that next year after the summer holidays she would be teaching in both the primary and high school parts of the school and she would be taking them for a few classes. She said to them, you kids had better behave or there'll be trouble. I don't want no pranks. Then Stampy, then, Sta then Stampy said, hey miss, what's over there? Then he pinched her bum and she chased him around the room so that she could get her own back. But she was unable to catch him. End of chapter 78. Thanks for watching guys. Mm -hmm.